Then the next part of this ayah is that وَإِذَا and when سَأَلْتُمُوهُنَّ You ask them. Meaning you, the addresses to the men, the sahaba are being addressed over here. That when you have to ask them, hunna, hunna meaning the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you have to ask them for a mata'an, mata'ar, what is mata'ar? Hmm? A useful object, all right, or something of use. So you have to ask them for something, something that matters to you, something that's necessary for you, that's useful for you. All right. Like for example, you have to ask them where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is. You have to ask them about something that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam needs from his house. You have to ask them about, let's say, some food or some money or anything like that, or even some ilm. If you have to ask them for something, فَسْأَلُوهُنَّ then ask them min from warai behind hijabin a screen. Hijab. Screen. I'm not going to translate this as a veil because when we hear the word veil, we think of this veil on your head. Right? Because we use the word hijab for that. But in the Quran, the word hijab is not used for the headscarf. It's not used for the veil that a woman wears. The word hijab in the Quran is used for a screen, a partition, a barrier. Alright? A screen, a partition, a barrier that is between, for example, two people preventing them from seeing each other. You understand? So for instance, a curtain. What is a curtain? Hijab. Alright? A barrier. You know these masjid dividers that we have? What is that? It's a hijab. You understand? It's a screen. This is the literal meaning of the word hijab and in the Quran also it has been used in this way. So when you have to ask the wives of the Prophet ﷺ for something, then you must ask them from behind a screen. Meaning you must not directly look at them. You must not do that. You must stay behind the door. You must stay on the side. And this is an etiquette that was taught earlier in Surah An-Nur also. We learned about it, right? Where we have been taught that when you go to somebody's house, then don't look in. Isn't it? Stay on the side. Because... What's inside the house, and that also includes the people of the house, you know, they are sacred in the sense that we must not even look at them unless they allow. Because it's possible that, you know, for instance, a person is wearing their pajamas, right? They don't want you to look at them in that way. So if you go and ring the bell, you knock the door, they open the door, don't peek in and look at what they're wearing. So this is a general etiquette. But here specifically with regards to the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba were told that make sure there's a screen between you and them. Make sure there's a screen between you and them. Alright? Why? Because ذَلِكُمْ That, O oh you all, it is أَطْهَرُ It is cleaner. أَطْهَرُ from tahara. It is cleaner لِقُلُوبِكُمْ For your hearts وَقُلُوبِهِنَّ And also for their hearts. This is something that will help you keep your heart clean and this is also something that will help them keep their hearts clean. Alright? وَمَا كَانَ لَكُمْ And it is not permissible for you. It does not befit you, O believers. أَنْ that تُؤْذُوا You hurt. رَسُولَ اللَّهِ The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم it's not correct for you to hurt the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to annoy him. So keep away from any behavior that would that would annoy him. Like which kind of behavior? Going to his house uninvited, going and staying in his house beyond your welcome. This is something that hurts him. Wala and nor, meaning also this is not permissible for you. This is also something that does not befit you. What? Am that tankihu you marry as wajahu his wives min ba'dihi after him abada ever. Meaning once the Prophet sallallahu passes away, it is not correct for you, O believers, to marry the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Inna dalikum, indeed that, O you all. Kana, it was ever in the Allah near Allah, Alima, great. Meaning this is an enormity, a great sin in the sight of Allah that you even think about marrying the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. Now over here, let's look at this ayah part after part. Okay? In the first section, we have been taught about the etiquette of entering the house of the Prophet ﷺ. Meaning do not enter the house without permission. Anas radullahu anhu said, 
that I used to serve the Prophet ﷺ and go in his house without permission. One day I came and the Prophet ﷺ said, Kama anta ya bunayya. Stop where you are, O oh my dear son. Meaning, do not come in, right? A hukum came after you, so now do not come in without permission. Alright, meaning you have to wait, you need permission before you enter. Alright? The second thing that's mentioned in this ayah is with regards to visiting the house of the Prophet ﷺ and we discuss that. The third thing that's mentioned in this ayah is the concept of hijab or the matter of hijab specifically with regards to the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. Remember that the hijab for the wives of the Prophet ﷺ was slightly different. Different in the sense that there had to be complete segregation also. Not just, you know, a jilbab, alright, a covering, or like for example a long shawl or something like that in order to cover their faces or their clothing or their hair with that. In addition to that, or instead of that rather, there was supposed to be a barrier, meaning allowing complete segregation. So hijab over here is implying what? Segregation over here. And this is the reason why any time we see that people would go to visit even Aisha radhiallahu anha and she would teach them, she would narrate to them, there would be a hijab, a screen. Alright? There would be a screen between her and the men. And likewise we learned when the wives of the Prophet ﷺ would go out, for example, to travel. How would they travel? They would go in a hawdaj. What is a hawdaj? Hawdaj is like a small mini tent on a camel. Alright? I'm sure you've seen pictures of this. Maybe you've seen this in real life. That on a camel, there isn't just a seat to sit on, but there's also a canopy to provide you shade. But the hawdaj was more than just the shade. It was also on the sides. Alright? Why do you think this segregation was for the wives of the Prophet ﷺ? You see, we discussed this earlier also. The famous women, all right, for some reason, people lose basic respect even for women of fame. This is a sad reality. It's disgusting what kind of things people discuss about famous women. It's disgusting about how they will not even spare their eyelashes or their height or their clothing or their makeup or their lips or anything like that. They will not spare them. It's horrible. So the wives of the Prophet ﷺ were the best of women. And they were also the women of the highest status socially. And this is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them over here from the eyes of dirty people. Because there are people like that in every society. And there is a particular context to this. We learned that there was a man in Medina who said that once the Prophet ﷺ will pass away, I'll marry Aisha. Radiallahu anha. He already had his eyes set on Aisha radiallahu anha while the Prophet ﷺ was alive. While Rasulullah ﷺ was alive. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the wives of the Prophet ﷺ in this way. And the men are being taught over here to observe utmost respect for them. And especially what is mentioned here, that you are forbidden from marrying them after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And this shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them. Right? Because they did such a huge sacrifice in the way of Allah. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also chose them to be the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in this dunya and also in the akhirah. Allah declared it a sin for any man to marry the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umar radiallahu anhu, he said that I agreed with Allah in three things. Or that my Lord agreed with me in three things. Meaning there were three things that I wanted and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed concerning those matters. And one of those matters was, this is reported in Bukhari, that I said that, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, good and bad people visit you. All types of people visit you. So why don't you order the mothers of the believers bil hijab, with hijab. And hijab over here means screening. Alright? 
not the veil, because veil is for who? For all women, as inshallah we will see later on. Over here, hijab means screening. Partition meaning segregation. So why don't you order your wives to do that? But the Prophet ﷺ did not until this ayah was revealed. So Umar radiallahu anhu said that my Lord agreed with me. All right, because he wanted this for the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. Because you know what, men understand men. All right, guys know guys, girls don't know. All right, we are very very naive. Seriously, we are. Men know what goes on in the heads of other men. So over here, Umar Abdullah Anhu, because of his respect and protectiveness for the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, he wanted this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed concerning this matter. Alright. But is there a lesson in this for us? Yes, this was exclusively for the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, but is there a lesson for us in this? What's the lesson? Yes. Okay, very good. That we must maintain some physical distance, right, between us and non-Muhammad men. There must be a gap, there must be a space between us and them, right? Because over here, you know, if this is for the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, then don't you think we need this more? Because what's the reason for hijab given over here? ذَلِكُمْ أَطْهَرُ لِقُلُوبِكُمْ وَقُلُوبِهِنْ this is something that's purer for your hearts and also purer for their hearts. What's the reason for hijab? To keep the heart pure and clean. Because shaitan literally runs in the blood of man. So will shaitan let our hearts stay clean? No, he won't. We discussed this earlier. This is something very normal that a person looks at another and admires their looks, admires their clothing. This is something very normal. It happens. So here we are being taught to, that we have to try to keep our hearts clean. How? By closing the window that could possibly lead to haram. That could possibly lead to haram. Alright? We learned that the Prophet ﷺ once he stood on the mimbab and he said, after this day, no man should enter the house of another person in his absence. Meaning, while his wife is there, while his family is there, no man should enter the other man's house while his wife is there, his family is there, in his absence. But only when he is accompanied by one person or two persons. Meaning, basically, that no man should be alone with, with a non-mahram woman. This is known as khalwa being alone with somebody. And it's a technical term, being alone with somebody that you're not supposed to be alone with. Even if it's for a professional reason, work-related reason. Alright? Even then, make sure that you hold such a meeting, where? In a more public place. Like for example, a library. Or for example, for example, huh? Tim Horton. <laughs> okay. Any other place? What about in school or in university? What kind of a place could that be? In the stairwell? Is it? Behind the stairs? Where? In an open public place. Like a cafeteria or a meeting hall or something like that. Alright? Why? It is purer for your heart and also for their heart. Because admit it. You're a human being. You have feelings. Don't you? They're also a human being. They have feelings. You're young blood, aren't you? Seriously, this is something within human beings. So we have to protect ourselves from wrong. You understand? And when it comes to inclination, right? Appreciating somebody's looks, their hair, their mustache, their beard, or anything like that. These feelings come in, they pop into your heart without your control, don't they? Do you think, okay, nice beard, tick mark? No, you don't logically think there. You don't tell yourself to appreciate somebody's beard. It comes like that. It just comes naturally. Correct? Come on, I need some kind of response. Either you girls are too shy, or I'm talking about, you know, imaginary things. Things that are not real. Is this real? Okay, thank you. 
Because I, I don't want to be talking about weird things, okay? I know this is weird, but this is real. So, we have to accept that it's possible to feel attraction for a person of the opposite gender. This is something that's normal. We have to accept this happens. And while this is something beautiful because it may lead to halal, it may also turn very ugly because it can lead to haram. It can also turn very bad in the sense that it could constantly affect your thinking, distract you from what is important, distract you from your work, keep you thinking about somebody that you shouldn't be thinking about. You should be thinking about your biology you know, exam, but you're thinking about something else. It's not good. It's not healthy. Right? So we have to close the door that leads to haram. And what are those doors? It is being alone with somebody. One of those is what? Being alone with a person who is non-mahram. Alright? You know, one is that you meet them somewhere, and the other is that you're constantly looking at them. Constantly looking at them. This is also problematic. Like for example, if we're at school, we don't talk to them. We're just sitting at our table, we're just looking at them. And then looking at them there, and then looking at them in class. And then maybe check their Facebook profile. And then we find out that they even make videos. Oh wow, okay, one video after the other, after, one picture after the other, after the other. This is also something that could lead to wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, ذَلِكُمْ أَطْهَرُوا لِقُلُوبِكُمْ وَقُلُوبِهِمْ That means we have to try our best to keep our hearts clean. You know, the amazing thing is, the Sahaba are being taught, try to keep your heart clean. The Sahaba, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ are being taught, try to keep your heart clean. Close the door that could lead to fitna. What about us? What about us? Weren't the wives of the Prophet ﷺ already married? Of course they were. Weren't these Sahaba married? Many of them were. I mean, Jabir anhu, he was probably a teenager when he got married. Seriously. Because in that society, even men married very young. Alright? So, majority of the people were married anyway. But despite that, and despite the age differences, and despite hijab, and salah, and dhikr, and you know, being people of taqwa, still, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders them to observe this etiquette in order to keep their hearts and minds clean. We need this as well. Right? So the purpose of hijab is tahara of the eyes and tahara of the heart. And the next thing that's forbidden, that's mentioned in this ayah is the prohibition of marrying the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. All right? And also another thing that's mentioned in this ayah is that it's not permissible for you to hurt the Prophet ﷺ. Because إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Those people who hurt Allah and His Messenger, Allah has cursed them in this world and also in the hereafter. So it's not permissible for a believer to do anything that would hurt the Prophet ﷺ while Rasulullah ﷺ is alive. Nor is it correct for a believer to do anything that would hurt him after his death. Like marrying the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. Allah says, In tubudu, If you reveal shay'an, anything, aw or tukhfuhu, you hide it, you conceal it. Whether you show it or you hide it, فَإِنَّ Allah, Then indeed Allah, كَانَ He is ever بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ With everything, عَلِيمَا All-knowing. You show it or you hide it. Allah knows. Why is this mentioned over here? Because we might say, you know, we might try to deceive ourselves. Oh, my heart is very clean. I don't think about guys. I don't think about them in, in this way or in that way. You know, we're just working together on this project, right? And this is why we couldn't find any quiet place. So this is why we are just, you know, sitting in his car and doing the work. Alhamdulillah, clean intentions, pure intentions, perfectly fine. Insha'Allah. However, realize that you're a human, they're a human. And shaitan is always after us. Right? So over here, Allah says, whether you show it or you hide it, Allah knows. You can't hide it from Allah. We can hide it from other people. 
we can even try to hide it from ourselves by not admitting to ourselves. Don't we do that sometimes? We know in our hearts that we're guilty. We don't admit it. We don't accept it. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمًا Now, of course, this is about a particular context, which is about what that man said with regards to marrying Aisha radiallahu anha. So that man, he expressed it. Right? He expressed it. And it's possible that some other people also had these intentions and they did not express them. Right? So, it's being made clear. You show it or you don't. You cannot hide from Allah. And we need to apply this to ourselves. Anything that's wrong near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we keep it in the heart, it's corrupting the heart, keeping the heart dirty. And if the heart is dirty, Allah knows about it. We should be concerned about keeping our heart clean before Allah. In Surah Ghafir ayah 19, Allah says, يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنِ وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ He knows that which deceives the eyes and what the hearts conceal. Even the deception of the eyes, Allah knows. And what the hearts conceal, Allah knows about that also. Then, لا جناحة, there is no sin. عَلَيْهِنَّ on them. On who? On the women, meaning the wives of the Prophet wasallam. Meaning there is no sin upon them, nothing wrong on their part, if they do not maintain a screen between themselves and the men that are mentioned over here. Which men? فِي أَبَائِهِنَّ Concerning their fathers. Aba is the plural of Ab. And when the term Aba is used, it includes grandfather, it includes uncles also. Wala and nor abna'ihinna, their sons. Alright, and of course this includes grandsons also. Wala ikhwanihinna, nor their brothers. Now this brothers does not include cousins by the way. Okay, we think, oh cousin, my brother. No, cousin is cousin. Okay, he's non-mahram. So, wala ikhwanihinna, nor their brothers, wala and nor abna'i ikhwanihinna, the sons of their brothers, meaning nephews. Wala and nor abna'i, the sons of akhawatihinna, their sisters, meaning their nephews. Wala and nor nisa'ihinna, their women. Meaning the wives of the Prophet ﷺ were not required to maintain a screen between themselves and other women. Wala and nor ma that which malakat aymanuhunna their right hands possess meaning slaves when it comes to slave men the wives of the prophet ﷺ did not have to maintain a screen between themselves and, and them now this might seem very strange to us remember that the whole dynamic was different the situation was completely different so this was a reality at that time no longer for us but at that time this was something that existed in front of slave men there was no hijab however allah says what taqin allah and you all fear Allah. Notice the noon, the plural noon, it's for feminine. So all oh, women fear Allah. And of course, which women are these? The wives of the Prophet ﷺ. Have taqwa of Allah. In secret and in public. In private and in public. Because without the fear of Allah, the outward hijab will not benefit a person. The outward hijab will not benefit a person. Because it's possible that a woman is all covered up, head to toe. Even a niqab is on and the gloves are on. But then what happens? Dirty feelings are being entertained in the heart. You know, recently somebody was telling me, they were in a public place, walking somewhere, and a lady approached them, a girl, let me say, approached them and said, Sawirni, you know, take a picture with me. Okay? Take a picture with me. Random girl wants to take a picture with a random guy. And this random girl is actually wearing hijab, head to toe. I thought, you know, these are stories that you hear. But this is something that actually happened. Alright? So we need to think about it, that hijab should not just be something that's a part of our culture. You know, I've always seen my mom wear it. I've always worn it as a child. And I'm wearing it. This is just something that's part of me. It's just cultural. It's not a cultural thing. It's a religious thing. And any religious act must be done with fear of Allah. It must be done with love for Allah. With hope in Allah. Because remember, even the observance of hijab is an act of ibadah. And ibadah has three pillars. Khawf. 
Raja and Hub. Fear, hope, and love. This is what completes and perfects ibadah, any act of worship. So when we're wearing a hijab, this is not just you know part of our clothing. This must be done with the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with love for Allah, with hope in Allah. So what taqeen Allah, fear Allah. And also remember that once we are wearing the outer hijab, all right, once we're wearing this clothing in order to cover our bodies, we must also be careful about our speech, about our laughter, about our walk, about our talk. Does that conform with taqwa or does that contradict taqwa? If it goes against taqwa, then the purpose is not being fulfilled. It's really not being fulfilled. So what taqeen Allah? Inna Allah kana ala kulli shay'in shahida. Indeed, Allah is ever over all things a witness. So Allah is watching us no matter where we are. In private or in public. With our family or with friends. At home or at school or work. No matter where we are, Allah is watching us. So we are to observe the proper hijab out of the fear of our moms? Yeah? The fear of a group in charge? Or fear of somebody else? Or some religious auntie in the family? Khala, maybe? No. Out of fear of who? Who? Because this is for who? Allah. So what taqeen Allah? Inna Allah kana ala kulli shay'in shahida. Okay. Now, I want you to look at the last part of ayah number 53. Okay? Where the men are told that when you have to speak to the women, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, then you must speak to them from behind a hijab. So the command is for who? The men. Right? But here in this ayah, the command is for who? For the women. What's the command? To the women. La junaha alayhinna. There is no sin on them. Meaning, if it's other men, then it would be a sin for them. Right? So, what does it show then? The responsibility is upon who? Men as well as women. Because both are weak, both are humans, both have weaknesses. Correct? Because sometimes we say things like, Men have been told to lower their gaze. So you know what? They should lower their gaze. And I should be allowed to dress up however I want. Okay. Men are told to lower their gaze. But at the same time, women have been told to observe their proper veil also. Isn't it? We have also been given rulings concerning our hijab. Isn't it so? Likewise, women have been told to lower their gaze. Also, so it's the responsibility of not just men, but also, also who? Women. And you know what? Each person needs to take responsibility of themselves. Each and every one of us needs to think about who? Ourselves, myself. That I must, you know, try to keep my heart clean. Okay? And at the same time, I must also not be a source of, you know, fitna for somebody else. You understand? And if each person starts worrying about themselves, then a lot of our problems would be solved. We need to be concerned about ourselves because majority of the time our focus is on who? Other people. That guy is looking, you know, these Arab men, they have some problem, they stare. Or these Pakistani men, they have a problem, they stare. You know what? All men have a problem. All men do. They're men. That's simple. Right? So we need to stop worrying about men and we need to worry about who? Ourselves. The responsibility is upon the individual. Protect yourself and don't be a source of sin for anybody else either. This doesn't mean that if somebody else is committing sin, it's your fault. It's your fault if you made it easier for them. You understand? If you gave them a chance, if you gave them an opportunity. But of course, for some people, even if you try your best to not give an opportunity, they'll make an opportunity. So of course it's not your fault. Each person is responsible to the point that they are able. Go ahead. 
In these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes the nature of human beings. He recognizes and accepts the fact that this is who you are, this is how you were made. So there's no, like, it, despite the fact that this is who you are naturally, there should still be some laws and rules observed to protect you from that. You can't claim, oh, this isn't my nature, and then go along with it. You still have to be careful about it. Exactly. Yes. And they're kind of making a fuss out of the why that somebody is looking at them and they're telling everybody around it's kind of weird exactly it happens they're looking at me they're looking at me they're looking at me don't make a fuss about it watch what you're wearing check what you're wearing fix yourself and hopefully people won't bother you with their eyes right you know when I started wearing niqab let me tell you the story I was in the haram okay and I was doing tawaf alright and my dad was there, but he was at the hotel. So me and my sister, I believe, we went to do tawaf between the salah, between the two prayers. And, you know, as usual, when you go there, you lose each other, right? So that happens. I was doing tawaf, and I felt like somebody was looking. You know when you get that feeling, somebody's looking? And it was not right. This was the haram. I was alone. I didn't have a phone. It wasn't that busy because it was between zuhur and asr. It was extremely hot burning hot when your feet hurt and I felt extremely scared I finished a tawaf and I went into the women's section and I found that individual literally stalking me I was looking for a shurta somebody to complain to but I was like how am I going to speak because they're not going to understand me I don't know how to speak Arabic they don't understand English there's no way any communication will happen I just sat there frozen for so long in the women's area and I'm like, I gotta go. So I had to cover my face and go. That's the first time ever I covered my face. First time. Then I took it off. And then eventually, later on I did. But that was my first experience. And then I understood why, you know, the people who encouraged me to do it encouraged me. Because in the most sacred place also, there will be troublemakers. This is a sad reality because shaitan is after every single person. Right? Shaitan is after every single individual. If the sahaba are being told, this is pure for your heart and pure for their hearts, what about my heart? Right? What about these random people? What about their hearts? So anyway, we have to worry about ourselves. Did you want to say something? I was reading this thing, and um, it was basically by this teacher uh, of Islam, and he was saying that he takes a group of 100 people for Umrah or Hajj every year, and he was telling, he wrote in that post that many of the women, they come back, or like during the trip, they complain to him that while they were doing tawaf, or like while they were doing such and such action, there were men in ihram around them, and they would like start touching them and stuff. And then when the women would look at the men, they would smile at them as if to say like, yeah, I'm doing this purposely. I mean, there are people like that who exist in this world, right? And like we discussed earlier, that respect for women, this is a part of a man's, you know, akhlaq, his, his morality. And this is something that's never constant. It goes up and down. And there are times when a person will fall and he will do such disgusting things just to satisfy his desire or, or whatever it is. And a woman gets harassed. And, you know, if the most sacred place, the haram, is not spared, then what do we think about the other places in this world? And as we can see in the news, what's happening? No place is safe, right? So, you know, we should not be that naive thinking that if we are dressed in a particular way, no man is going to feel wrong or think about wrong thoughts about us. Yes? Just one quick um, point. Uh, the ayah is specific to the wives of the Prophet wasallam. And not only are they married, they're married to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And uh, you just mentioned the man who had that thought about Aisha. So it doesn't mean that when you get married, you got a free pass. You always have to constantly protect yourself because Shaitan doesn't just go, oh, you're married. Okay, I got to stop now. I don't, I'm not going to mess with you. He's going to mess with you forever. So exactly. taqwa, it's, it's important that you always seek protection and always have it at the back of your head. Just because you're married or you're wearing hijab, there are people out there nowadays 
just because you're Muslim, they won't leave you alone. Even if you have hijab, they'll exactly. come approach you. So you always, you have to constantly seek protection. Yeah. And this is why it's necessary that we also watch our behavior and we also watch the physical distance, the physical gap that we have between ourselves and another individual. Go ahead. Also, just for us, like you were mentioning, when women are harassed, regardless of their hijab, to also keep in mind, like with rape culture, a lot of people think that if you're wearing a lot of clothes or if you're covered, that somehow you're protected. But what happens is that sometimes people who are wearing a lot of clothes or not wearing clothes at all will still be attacked. And so we have this culture where we internalize and think that it's their fault, especially with women who you'd think would be like, they're our allies, but then they still think it's the woman's fault. And like sometimes what happens is that you'll be wearing full hijab. It will come from someone who's like close to you. Exactly. And so like with women within ourselves, we have to be careful to make sure that we're not blaming other women, regardless of what they're wearing when they get attacked in this way, because they internalize it and it causes a lot of problems. Exactly. And, um, uh This is why we see over here that you do your best to protect yourself, to cover yourself, right? So you take a lot of measures to to cover yourself. But at the same time, you cannot control the actions of other people. If they have done something wrong, they are guilty. Each person is answerable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just because a woman is covered, that doesn't mean that she will be safe from men. She also has to watch her behavior the physical distance that she maintains between herself and strange men, right? What taqeen Allah, she must also watch her speech, her manner of carrying herself, the way in which she interacts with other people. Don't allow anybody to even come close to you. Don't allow anybody to even come and sit next to you. They come and sit next to you, move away. Really do that a few times and they'll get it. I've done this myself, numerous times. People get it doesn't mean you have to be rude in your words or in your speech, but in your behavior. So you do your best. And of course, you make dua to Allah. Allahumma hafadhni min bayni yadayya wa min khalfi wa an yameeni wa an shimali. Right? That, oh Allah, you protect me from my right, from my left, from front of me and from behind me. You make sure you say your adhkar for the purpose of protection. Hijab is a means. It's a tool of protection. All right? Just like duas are. Just like your attitude, your behavior, your interaction is. It's one of the tools. It doesn't guarantee everything, but it's something that facilitates protection. Right? So don't think that just because you're wearing hijab, you'll be safe and protected. And this is why you can go and, you know, high five with guys and sit next to them and chill with them. And and then if somebody says something inappropriate, then you get all angry over there. Right? So watch your clothing as well as your behavior. All right.